Here we're going to take a look at a reaction that is complementary to the hydrohalogenation that we learned earlier in the semester. So if you take a double bond and react it with HBr, this we know follows Markovnikov addition where the bromine ends up on the carbon um, that's more substituted, the hydrogen ends up on the carbon that's less substituted or the side where there's more hydrogen. The reason for this is because when you react it with the HBr, you form a carbocation intermediate. So the hydrogen will go to the less substituted carbon, the carbocation to the more substituted carbon, and then when the bromide reacts, it will react with the carbocation to give the Markovnikov addition product. So what we want to look at here is how do we do the opposite of this? Basically get the anti-Markovnikov addition product where the bromine is on the less substituted carbon, the hydrogen is now on the more substituted carbon. Our typical solution, if we want to change the product, is we change the reagents to change the reaction mechanism. And it only requires a subtle reagent change. We still use HBr, but we add peroxides to this. This could be something like hydrogen peroxide or another peroxide. What you want to look for is the OO bond to designate a peroxide. So how exactly does this work? Well, what the peroxide does is it switches the mechanism to a radical mechanism. And it follows the same pathway we've talked about before for radical mechanisms. First step, initiation. So the thing about a peroxide, like hydrogen peroxide, is the oxygen-oxygen bond is pretty weak. And what can happen is that can break apart to give us two peroxy radicals, or hydroxy radicals. Next, we have a second part of the initiation where the hydroxy radical reacts with HBr. And that will abstract the hydrogen, giving us the bromine radical. So this forms water plus a bromine radical. The next part of this mechanism is the propagation. And this is where we get the anti-Markovnikov selectivity. So you can imagine, here's your alkene, and we have a bromine radical. And this can react with the double bond and do a radical addition. We have two options, though. This can react. The bromine can go to the less substituted carbon, and that'll leave a radical on the more substituted carbon. Or the opposite, the bromine can go to the more substituted carbon, leaving a radical on the less substituted carbon. Well, let's draw both possibilities. There's the bromine at the less substituted carbon. Here's the bromine at the more substituted carbon. Well, based on these two radicals, the one on the left 
is a more stable intermediate because it's more substituted. So that is the preferred pathway, not the pathway on the right. From here, now it goes through this radical intermediate, and then that can abstract the hydrogen from the HBr. That gives us our anti-Markovnikov product plus a bromine radical, which can now come up here and do another round of propagation. So this is how the product is formed. Now, of course, being a radical mechanism, we do have a third step, which is just a termination. And this is when two radicals come together and form a bond. So there's a few different possibilities here. We'll just draw one. If two bromine radicals happen to run into one another, they'll come together and form Br2.